We're all packed up, ready to leave Brisbane. Tetris King, how'd you go with packing the car again? Yeah, fun times. Fun <laughs> so, I uh, can't show you what's in the boot, but she's full. Got the message going. All right, so we're off. It's freezing. It's freezing. Look, we got. I've got a beanie. You've just taken your beanie off. Only because oh. I've been getting all hot and sweaty making Tetris in the back of this car. <laughs> it's bloody freezing. So, for those of you that are new to the channel, everything we own fits in our car. Everything. And this is coming from two people who had a three bedroom townhouse in the inner city Melbourne. Full of stuff. So we've done pretty well. So today we are driving to Rockhampton. So it's about a seven hour drive. Yeah, I think we're doing, uh, gee, well, maybe 700 odd kilometers today. Yep, and then tomorrow we will do the rest of the trip to get to Ailey Beach. I think that's another five hours and another 500 kilometers or something. Okay, so that's the plan. We're gonna take you along with us, show you what we eat and how we go on the road. Breakfast of champions. Yeah. Bananas. We forgot to mention, guys, we're actually driving from uh, Brisbane up the Sunshine Coast of Australia to the Whit Sundays. So, really, quite a scenic drive. We'll see what we can show you along the way. This is like, you know, Australian premier tourist destinations. Guess what's coming up? Dr. Snip. <laughs> Woo! That's our man. <laughs> on your neck. If you want a vasectomy, guys, Dr. Snip's your man. He's done over 20,000, including mine. All good. Thumbs up. Double thumbs up. <laughs> Quick pit stop to use the bathroom. Climbing Matilda. Matilda the kangaroo. <laughs> Got some bananas? Some bananas, yeah. A couple of days away, particularly in this weather, but that was as ripe as they had. Okay. So the owner of that dog just approached us and she was furious that I'd taken footage of her dog that was sitting in the car in a public car park and she was with her child, her small daughter, and she said, um, you can't just take photos of other people's stuff, of their belongings, of other people's dogs. You can't do that. She said, you need to ask permission, permission, before you film somebody else's stuff, before you film somebody else's dog. Well, did you ask permission? from the animal before you ate it there sitting at the counter because that's what you were eating did you ask permission to kill somebody to put into your steak pie don't think you did lady I just took some footage of your little dog in the car park you ate an animal I didn't go up to you and say excuse me you need to ask permission first I would like to but I didn't so this is Australia this is typical Australian mentality and behavior we are so rude we are so arrogant so small-minded, parochial. <sighs> she walked off and she was swearing and carrying on with her kid. Just incredible. I mean, compare that to Thailand. No comparison yeah. whatsoever. Truth be told, this is a culture built on the back of penal colonies with convicts. And we're still seeing the, you know, just the aftermath 200 years later. The violence, the, the uh, aggression, that's the word. They're so aggressive. Free range organic local grass fed beef. That's where they all are. Sold at McDonald's, Subway, Hungry Jacks or Burger King, and many more. All in the same way at the slaughterhouse. Stopping for lunch. What do we got here? Some oatmeal. With raisins, sugar, cinnamon, and some organic apple. Nice. Hey guys, so we just finished our lunch and yeah, we've just been talking about how we're feeling about this whole trip and this next leg. It's interesting to sort of, you know, get comfortable with being uncomfortable and, you know, feel secure with uh, insecurity. And... <laughs> like we've got a room for 
booked tonight, but that's it. We don't have anywhere to stay when we get to Airlie Beach yet. Um, and it's really expensive. And this is the thing with Australia. If you move left or right of the box, it costs you so much. Like for example, it is literally 50 dollars a night just for a tent um, so a room you know you're looking at 60 plus like tonight's costing us what 64 dollars yeah. just uh you know for a it's not a hotel it's just no, a room it's in attached to, attached to someone's house yeah, yeah. so it, it's really expensive when you don't have a fixed plan and when you don't have that security of knowing exactly what you're doing this is the hard part and you know we're lucky we're in a situation where it's just us we don't have kids um we don't have a lot of other things that are demanding us to be somewhere or do something. Once upon a time we did, but we changed all that mm. and now we wouldn't have it any other way. No. Now this yeah. is the most challenging part of the way we live now mm. and yet these challenges we would prefer to you know, re-encounter mm. than the challenges that we faced in the lifestyle we used to live. Yeah, absolutely. And we've been talking about how this is the most, um, this is the thing that turns most people away from taking that chance from changing it up from following their dream or creating whatever this uncertainty and the not knowing yes isn't it? you know yes. yeah the uncertainty yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know the lack of security yeah and yeah. that financial pressure of okay, if you don't have any savings behind you well how am I going to do it you know how am I going to pay for this accommodation if the job or waiting for the job to come through or whatever it's going to be so we can so understand how Absolutely. you know people just choose ah oh, you know I'll just stay in the same old job I'll just stay at my desk um, and not take that chance. The danger there though is that 15, 20, 30, 40 years goes by before you know you really start to live perhaps yeah, even yeah. because you're just stuck in the same mindset, uh, in the same daily routine, mm -hmm. same daily tasks and activities and yeah. Sometimes you just got to take that. You got to break out of the mold. Just sometimes try and, and take that leap of faith. Yeah, we... yeah, yeah, and yeah. Have no idea if it's going to work or not, but it doesn't matter. It's the adventure along the way. So... And dinner is served. Just a really simple pasta, some corn pasta we brought with us. Simple sauce, a couple of olives. Easy done. It's always good to be able to cook for yourself when you're travelling on the road. Absolutely. So that vegan couple are in. Cattle Country, Australia. <laughs> this place here is surrounded by cattle farms and ranches, and we arrived in uh, what did the the big sign says "Welcome to Rockhampton" and it's on a huge cow. Yeah, and then the uh, guest house owner offered us some uh, milk and eggs. Yeah, and we had to say, "Oh, actually, we're vegan. We've got our own food, but thank you anyway." Food just full of cheese and yeah. Oh, I've got to show you. So this is the this is the standard Australian diet. Cheese, milk, yogurt, more meat, beer, what's that? More cheese, butter, eggs, eggs. That's it. Other so, than that, it's a great uh, guest house, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely, really cute. We've got this whole place to ourselves, bedroom in there, little kitchen and bathroom. So, we're here for the night and we take off early tomorrow morning. Do it all again. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next video. See you guys.